Ladies and gentlemen, my name is uh, Greg Michalowski, and I'm with a Forex uh, Live, and uh, this is a webinar, special webinar for the good people at FX uh, Street, and I'm glad you uh, are participating. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about anticipating the story before it's written. Anticipating the story, the story before it's written. Before we get started, let me remind everybody that trading foreign exchange carries a lot. High level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors. In addition to that, leverage creates additional risk and loss exposure. Should you decide to trade foreign exchange, carefully consider your investment objectives, your experience level, your risk tolerance. You can lose all or part of your risk capital in the foreign exchange market. So be aware and be prepared. So who am I? My name is uh, Greg Michalowski. I've been working in the financial markets for well, over 28 years now. Uh, 15 years in the institutional market as an interest rate trader for Citibank and CSFB, 13 years with FXDD. The first six or seven years there were mainly focused on the risk management side over the last five or six years um, prior to this year. I've been, uh, I've been with you as a Forex analyst, author of Tech and Currency Trends, and now I'm the Director of T Technical Analysis and Trader Education at ForexLive.com. And uh, so uh, that's uh, my background. Here I have uh, have uh, institutional trading experience and then retail side. Uh, so I've seen a lot th that traders do right and what they do wrong. And I developed, you know, a, a focus. Uh, you know, it's biased, if you will, uh, or biased toward the technical side. But that's okay. Um, I do look at fundamentals as well. But anyway, uh, my main focus is on the technical side. So we'll talk a little bit about that a little bit later. So. Uh, if you you can uh, visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel, just go to YouTube and click in forexlive.com and uh, click on that. We'll put uh, videos up up there. On uh, we'll try to do it on a daily basis. And then uh, for more information on trading forex and daily commentary, make sure you visit forexlive.com, where we are one of the uh, um, most uh, visited or one of the most visited sites uh, in the forex community. So if you don't go there, please go there i think you won't be disappointed so traders to get started here about this idea of a uh, story okay the story of um the market of why the market when i say the story i mean the, the story uh behind the moves in the markets and all traders every trader that i've met always has this desire to know the story behind the moves what caused the market to do this what caused the market to do that and that that's a story of a currency move is often thought to be from the fundamental news of the day uh, you want to know the reasons fundamentally why the euro did this why the yen did that or the dollar yen did that or the uh, pound sterling or you know what about that euro swiss what what's the story with that isn't the s and b going to continue to uh, support that uh, currency pair at the 120 level. It's getting mighty close to that level. Um, you know, what do you think? What do you think? All these are stories, fundamental stories that traders want to know and hear. And the story gives the cause and effect for the price action, doesn't it? It, it tells you the reasons why uh, it's going here, the price is going here, the price is going there. And the story also, I think this is what, probably one of the most important important things because um, we all want to sound smart, don't, don't we? We all want to know um, uh, why this happened and, and be able to make a, uh, a judgment to it and explain it to most, uh, you know, People that may not even understand the markets. Uh, why, uh, you know, whenever I, I meet someone, I say that I am in, involved in the foreign exchange market. What will what will the uh, question first question be? Oh, that's interesting. What is the dollar going to do? Well, you know, the dollar is really reflective of uh, many different uh, stories, if you will. You know, the dollar versus what currency, the euro, the yen, the pound sterling, the Swiss franc, the, uh, you know, the, the, the Russian ruble. Um, all these all these are different different stories and they really all have a different story. And um, those stories can be um, be much different for one currency versus another. So you can have the dollar being strong against one currency and weak against the other currency, as you all well know. And so 
uh, it becomes a diff difficult uh, question to the lay person to be able to tell that story. But invariably, you know, you just try to give a broad stroke story about what the dollar is doing or what the euro is doing and then kind of leave it at that, you know. But uh, there's more behind the story that we as traders must know and understand in order to trade uh, successfully. And if we can anticipate those uh, stories, um, we have a better chance of uh, making money in, in the market. Now, I'm just going to leave it as stories. I'm not going to tell you about specific stories I'm going to look at. We'll talk about that in a little, little second of how you can anticipate those stories. Um, when the fundamental fits the price action, the story becomes very easy to write or tell after the fact. And uh, what, uh, in most cases, it is fairly easy to write what happened. For example, if the Reserve Bank of New Zealand says that they're in, they intervened and the currency is significantly overvalued, guess what might happen to the New Zealand dollar? Well, it might fall very sharply to the downside. That's a pretty cause, you know, an easy cause and effect story that you can tell that would uh, make sense, wouldn't it? And so that uh, becomes a very easy story to tell. And then we have uh, the BOJ increases uh, QE. That was that's been the story of late that has uh, caused the uh, yen to fall sharply lower and for the Nikkei to go sharply higher. And these again are stories that are written, fundamental stories that are written that give you a cause and effect for a currency pairs uh, or you know stock markets uh, movement to the upside or to the downside. And then we have uh, things like the Fed announced uh, QE3 was over. This is a recent story. Got rid of uh, the significant time before tightening. And I'm putting quotation marks around that significant time. And they also said there was not a significant underutilization of labor. This was a different tact by the uh, Federal Reserve or the FOMC and a different uh, story that they told. And what did that do to the U.S. dollar? It caused the U.S. dollar to move higher again very easy story to uh, understand and interpret and if the market moves in the same direction of the story it becomes pretty much a slam dunk the next day uh, after the FOMC announced those three things uh, or three main points what did we see in the US we saw the US GDP rose by 3.5 percent versus 3 percent percent estimate Wow, that's good news for the U.S. dollar, right? Because uh, if you have stronger growth in the U.S., the dollar should move higher, right? And on the same day, they, they, Germany actually came out and, and said that their their CPI um, fell by minus 0 0.3 versus minus 0 0.1 estimate. So, boy, this is a story that I'm going to write write uh, down and, uh, and, 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 and we're going to understand that, well, if the U.S. growth is going higher and, and German CPI is going lower, what does that imply for the euro versus U.S. dollar? Well, of course, it implies that the euro uh, should go down because the euro is, uh, you know, CPI is less. That's bad for the currency. And uh, the U.S. growth is stronger. But what happened on the day? The euro moved higher. And you ask your question, you ask the question, what, what? What's going on here? Why uh, did the euro move higher on this day uh, when when the fundamentals were uh, were obviously pointing toward a lower euro and a higher dollar? Uh, remember, we had the FOMC that was more hawkish. We had the U U.S. GDP, which was better, and we had the German CPI, which was weaker. The euro should go lo lower, not higher, and. Uh, in fact, the story should read, uh, the euro dollar weakened because the GDP was stronger and German CPI was weaker. That should be the story that I write, the fundamental story that I write in the paper or that I uh, or I give the quote to the Reuters or, or the Wall Street Journal or whoever or Bloomberg. Um, and it's it, it's what you should write in your trade blotter. This is the fundamental news that should have ha caused a market reaction for the euro versus U.S. dollar. But it just didn't go that way. And on this day, um, I wrote a... Um, I wrote a, 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 a post, a commentary uh, on our website at forexlive.com, and I said this: the U.S. GDP was better than expected. Okay, CPI out of Germany came out worse at minus 0 0.3. Uh, 
Uh, EU flash estimate comes out tomorrow. That was for the CPI. The fundamentals should be bearish for the euro dollar. We are seeing a reversal higher. We are seeing the price action move higher. And uh, then I continue on and say, technically, the price is approaching the low from last week at 126.13, you know, just, you know, it's just a level. Uh, the 38.2% of the move down from yesterday's high comes in at 126.31.6. There, uh, the, the, those are uh, resistance levels. Needless to say, the price action does not support the story, does not support the story, but... Um, oh, before I go on, Donald, uh, I don't know. Um, FX Street, is this still going to be uh, recorded? don't mean to slow things down here. But um, if not, uh, by the way, uh, I will make these uh, available uh, to you, this, these uh, slides available. So you can uh, just uh, send me an email at uh, greg at 4xlive.com. Uh, and what I typically do, by the way, uh, don't mean to digress, but um, uh, is I'll, I'll uh, put them in a Dropbox, and uh, you can uh, if you if you don't know have a Dropbox, there should be a you know the, you, you just uh, log in and you create an account. It's actually a nice way to put things up in a the cloud there and share them because oftentimes these files are large and sometimes they get rejected when I send them out. So um, just send me an email, Greg at forexlive.com, and I'll make sure that I uh, give you the slides here. All right, so uh, let's get back onto it. So um, when I um, when I wrote this about um, about the market, I implied certain things about the uh, about what was happening, about the story. The story wasn't telling um, what uh, telling telling me and telling the readers out there and and the traders out there what the fundamentals uh, were set were saying. The market market story the market price action wasn't telling what the fundamentals were staying saying and these are actual uh, comments that i got to this uh that that the people wrote in uh to this uh just small little two paragraph uh, comment here and uh some some people said that, that it was the uh, options expiry expires and some said uh, looks like profit taking and some said so what you know trading is is more of a, co a coin toss another person said uh, who knows what will happen in this market you know sort of like a coin to us. Uh, no one is interested in euro shorting, which I don't know. I'm interested in euro shorting, but uh, maybe, you know, I don't think no one is. I think other people are maybe, but anyway, I, I would have thought the euro would have gone down. Uh, some people uh, or one, one person said it was a bear trap. Seems like ma manipulation. It was month end. It was near the month end. It was, uh, you know, the October 30th. And the euro uh, is still a reserve currency in Nordic Swiss. Uh, so it must have been central bank inter intervention. Uh, buying by the central banks uh, in, in the uh, euro uh, to, you know, I don't know, increase their balances of euro and as a reserve currency in their balance sheets, I guess. So um, those are all different stories that were written by you, the people uh, and and followers of ForexLive.com as to what um, what was the reason why the euro didn't go down and, in fact, moved sharply to the upside on this particular day. For me, however, is that, that story was a bit weak, okay? Um, uh, you know, there, there have been many times when there's been an option expiry and we've had fundamental news and the market goes flying through the the option expiration, expiration price. There have been times when, um, uh, you know, the data comes out weaker, or stronger, and the market moves. You know, it's not, you know, how do you, uh, you know, it's not a bear trap, you know, or um, there are times uh, uh, when there isn't any profit taking, you know, or how do you, how do you define when profit taking is going to take place? Uh, is there any way that we as traders can anticipate the story that it's going to be profit taking? And, and, you know, when do we know that's going to happen? And, and the answer to that is I don't think we can. I don't think we can really know when it's going to be a bear trap. I don't think that we can really know when it's going to when profit taking is going to be happen. I don't think we really know when there's going to be an option expiry that's going to cause it to um, stay above it. Because I, you know, believe me, I've seen. You know, I know. I know. It seems like there's always support or resistance at a strike price, but I've seen it go zipping through those strike prices and have the option people scrambling on the other side, and it moves really quickly through those levels, and. Um, uh, so those those stories left me a bit um, wondering and a, and a bit uh, short of uh, of uh, you know what the real reason was 
for the movement in the euro versus U.S. dollar. And I have a confession uh, confession to make off of that. The, the story that is often written in the news is not really important to me, okay? It's not really important to me why the market did something or another from a, from a, from, from a fundamental perspective. So although I was... Um, curious and wondering, hmm, and uh, in, in my post, you know, what is happening here from a fundamental standpoint, it really wasn't all that important to me. What was important to me from that post was certain levels within the chart that started to tell me the story that I wanted to hear, okay? The story that I wanted to hear that will allow me to anticipate that maybe the market wasn't going to do what the fundamentals were saying. So it's not really the fundamental story that's most important to me. I said I was biased. It's uh, the price action story is most important to me. And the price action story tells me the story of what I call the market, all right? In quotation marks, the market. Understand that the market out there is a collection of buyers and sellers that battle it out each day. And those those battles uh, make a winner and they make a loser. If the buyers are in control, they tend to push the market further to the upside. If the sellers are in control, they tend to move the price further to the downside. And so the price action is the story of the market and the buying and the selling. And that's the story that's gonna, the, 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 that's the story that's gonna allow me to anticipate something that should happen is not gonna happen, all right? And we'll get to that in a second, I promise you. If I know that I can anticipate what will eventually be written in the news sources, even if the story is somewhat lame, okay, like 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 that day when the when the data came out and should be support supported or a support of the dollar, and uh, not and it goes the other way. So how can the story uh, be anticipated? And the way that I do it is by applying technical tools uh, to your trading. And I believe that uh, certain, following certain technical tools will help tell the story in most cases on most days. The words uh, written are dictated oftentimes by the price action from the market and the technical tools applied to that price action. If the market moves higher, like let's say the euro versus US dollar moves higher, that is, uh, you know, what's the price action doing? It's moving higher, so the buyers are overtaking the sellers, right? So the buyers are in control. You can bet dollars to donuts that the Wall Street Journal, the Bloomberg, that Reuters, and all the news sources out there, including ForexLive.com, is going to talk, talk fundamentally about why the price moved higher, aren't they? Uh, they're not going to talk about the euro going down because it didn't. It went higher. And so the words written by the price action from the market and, it, and the technical tools applied to it, it it's certainly it's, it's simply the price either goes higher or lower, and they're going to write the story that fits the, fits the print, the price print out there. All right. And, I, and um, so let me, let's get to a chart here, and I'll show you, um, you know, what I, what I mean here. And I, I want to focus... Um, here on some uh, technical tools that I use and just just visuals visuals that I see in the market that determine the story uh, for a uh, currency or a currency pair um, as a result of what what I see as the technicals and and I don't know honestly what you know this is this is that day that I spoke I, I spoke of and we'll get to this day where the market moved down initially and then we had the GDP we had the CPI and then what did the market do it moved higher to the upside but I'll go back and I'll take a look a little, little bit about the history here and go back at other level um, uh, or areas here and and tell the story from the price action. And if you go back uh, to this po these points right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
you know, what do we have? You know, it's plain to see we're, we're, we're coming up to a high. We come up to a high. We move lower. We same high right here and we can't go any higher. So what does the market do? It goes lower. If you can't go higher, you're going to go lower. And traders who uh, see this high right here and see this high right here and see the price not not being able to get above that level, they'll take a shot. I don't care if the if this is a bullish momentum here, they'll come in here and they'll take a shot against that level and sell. And if they're right, they, they'll win. They'll make this amount. And if they're wrong, they'll lose a little bit of amount because if the market goes above this level, they'll get out. And when the market comes back up to three in this day, it's, it's very similar to this day right here, by the way. So this V formation, okay? V formations are, are typically very, um, uh, very. Um, uh, those are the types of days where you, you you end up scratching your head. But we'll we'll talk about that over here. But over here, you can see uh, that the market came up to this level at three. And uh, what, what do we see? We see the market, again, reject that level, reject these highs right here and start to move lower. We come back up to it at four and we come down a little bit, come up to it at five and we come down, we come up to it at six and come down, down again. So up here, right here, there's a lot of trading opportunities, a lot of uh, technical stories to be told that are going to allow you to anticipate that this story is going to be to the downside if, if, as, if the price stays below that level. Now, of course, the market may go above that level and the story will be different at that point. But as long as the price can remain below that level and it's done it one, two, three, four, five, you know, six times, six times here, then the story is going to be to the downside. And so you can anticipate that that story that they're going to write in the paper is going to be more to the downside on that day. All right. And you can go back and you can look at this low right here and take a look at the low and it came down to it and came down to it and found support and stuff like that. So anyway, now let's take a look at this area right here. Now, this blue line represents the 100 hour moving average. Now, the 100 hour moving average is another one of those technical levels that I tend to find that there's some action around it. Now, admittedly, the market went below this level right here and we couldn't get below the prior low going back in time here. And the market moved back above that 100-hour moving average. So if you sold the 100-hour moving average here on the break of that level, you might be covering yourself if the market moves to the upside. I'm not saying that I have a crystal ball out there that's going to be able to tell you that the market's going to go down forever, but it will define and limit your risk against this level right here. And I find that the 100-hour moving average tends to be a level where there is some action around that, that area. All right. And so in this case, when the market moves below that level and comes back up to that level and tests that level and can't go above it, what should you as a trader, what kind of story should you say? You, can, you should say that um, the, the story from the market price action is that we can't go higher. So where are we going to go? We're going to go lower. And so if you can sell here and put your stop up here, you know, maybe near the closing level from the prior day. So risk that amount. You don't know how far the market's going to go, but you do know what your risk is. You do know what your risk is. And if you know your risk, then you, 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 you define your risk, you limit your risk, you accept your risk as a trader. Those are the three steps for trading. And if you can accept your risk, then you can accept the fact that you may have the potential of losing this amount. But if you're right, you're, you're risking a little to make hopefully more than a little, hopefully more than what you're risking on here. You know, let's say from here, from the prior close to here. So you're, you're and and indeed it works, you know, but it, it works this time. It doesn't necessarily work all the time, but you understand that is a risk. And that's what we as traders do. We define our risk. We limit our risk. We accept our risk. All right. Uh, down here, we uh, come down to our prior lows here. I pointed them out er earlier. We went a little bit above, a little bit below. And also we have the 200 hour moving average here, the green line in the chart. Now, sometimes when the market moves very fast, and this is a larger than normal day compared to any of the other days right here, and it's a pretty decent move to the downside. So you get this congestion area around here in the market, though, find support or resistance or, or find support around that 200 hour moving average. It's taking a breath, but allows you the opportunity to again trade against that level and does it again here and moves lower. Over here, obviously, we have a nice little trend channel right here, a number of different points here along the channel. Draw your lines. Um, again, we or, or we do have a, a false break right here. No closes above that level, but the market does break above the top side trend line right here. And it comes down, tests the 200-hour moving average green line chart, moves up to four right here. And if you're lucky enough 
to uh, recognize this level he, up here at four, you get the benefit of the FOMC uh, interest rate um, or the, the, the three things that I outlined earlier in the day when the market really gapped to the downside here, falling below all these levels, uh, the uh, the uh, bottom side trend line, the 200-hour moving average at the same part, the 100 Hundred hour moving average here moves sharply to the downside, but it, you could have you could have invariably um, gotten short here with a you know stop um, you know above here or you know somewhere above that le level or right here maybe even no this is even higher it's, it's a high above that level but you can go up to this old high right here put your stop there and sell it here and you're, if you get get lucky you can live through the FOMC decision because you have profit in the trade you invest that profit and the market comes back down. So that's what we as traders try to do, is try to put at the odds of success in our favor, to write the story, to anticipate the story, story, um, and profit from, from, that, uh, from that move just by looking at the technical levels, looking at the price action, uh, that, and, the, and the tools applied to that price action, gives us that opportunity to write that story, to anticipate that story if the market moves lower. So um, here we are on that day with the, where we had have the uh, the day after the FOMC, and we have the GDP come out, or or we have the market continue its move to the downside, and then the GDP comes out, the the uh, German CPI, the market moves to new lows, but then it quickly rebounds to the top side. And, and you're asking, how are you supposed to anticipate a day like that? And so what happened down here? What happened at the lows right here? And this uh, this uh, requires a little bit more of a um, look back, okay? Um, when when whenever I look at a chart, I always want to go back in time. Well, first off, go back here. We don't see uh, what what happened prior to October 14th here, because you know we hadn't been below this level in a long while. But I need to go back and I need to see the last time the market was um, below this area. And way back when over here, I actually marked this area as a level of importance here. Why? Because we had a low here and we had a, a, a reactionary high. This is a quick move to the downside, a quick move back to the upside. And then the next time the market came down to that level, came down to that level, what did we see? We saw buyers come in early against that level, not once, but twice, four hours different. All right, four or five hours different. And so what does this say to me right here? Um, or, or the, and then it moved higher. So what does it say to me right here, This, these lows right here? This says to me that sellers were happy here, but sellers were not so happy right here. The sellers were in control here. The sellers turned to buyers here. If you can see that or just earmark it or watch it, Watch that as a level. Put a horizontal line across these lows right here and say, we had a low, we had two other lows that came in higher. And those two lows came in pretty much at the same exact price. And the market moved um, higher here, back to where we started up over here for, uh, for the most part. And then it rotated to the downside. Here's some news that takes the price to the downside. But this level sometimes becomes a very important level, even in the future. All right. And so the next time the market came down to the, this area right here after it, it, uh, it, it moved below this level and failed and, and tried to stay below the level, you see how the market comes up to this, this floor area here, moves down, can't do it. Then, then we just break to the upside and move higher back to the 200. So what do we do? We come back to that level and we find support again at that level. If you can see that, that, and that, maybe it'll tell you something about the future back here. All right. Tell you something about what happened right here. You never know, and so um, so that's what I'll do in my charts. And I and I implore you or try or, or try to encourage you to do the same things. Look for these areas where the market rejects it, rejects it, early, earlier reject, come back up, come back to the level, and go. And if it goes through that level, it doesn't. It doesn't make this less important. The fact that it went through that level and came back above that level reestablishes that level as another key, as a key support. All right? Understand that. Try to do that because you never know when it'll come into play. So when I when when I saw the market moving down here on that GDP day and wondering what what's going on going on here? We should go lower here. I want to see what happened at the 71 to 84 level and see if I can I can uh, I can figure out the story before it's written. 
So in order to see what happened uh, there, um, it, it's more important to drill down and take a look at the five-minute chart. And if you look at the five-minute chart and you look at that 71 to 84 level, again, those are, the, those are these levels right here, 71 and 84, two floors right there, two levels that I, I find important, 71 to 84. And if I drill down and I take a look at the five-minute chart, this is, a, this, is pre, this is pre the data data points right here. The market came down once, came down twice, should have gone lower, didn't it, correct it up. We got the GDP. You know, that could be just covering into the GDP and the uh, other data. And then the market moves below that level. And this bar right here tells a story. This tells a technical story that you want to write about, that you want to trade off of, that you want to be aware of if you're going to be successful as a trader. And that story says that the GDP came out and the market moved sharply to the downside, made new lows, came back up and closed above the 71 level, and damn, darn near got back up to the 80, 81 level or 84 level, but the next bar did move above that level. And note what happened here. Once we moved above that 84 level, the 71 to 84 level, this yellow area right here, the market then turned from sellers to buyers. How do I know that? Because they're showing up right here. They're showing up right here. The price does not lie, folks. The price often tells you a lot of different things. And if you can, if you can mark levels that you think are important, chances are the market's going to think that they're important as well. They're going to look back over here, and they're going to look back and say, this is an important level. If we get below that level, we should stay below that level. And if we can't stay below that level, we have the potential to move higher. Does it happen all the time? No. Does it happen uh, you know, a lot of the times? I find it does. Find those key levels. They don't have to be a lot. Just find the ones that make sense, that, that say to you, I can see it. I think they can see it as well. And if you can do that, the market will revisit those levels and it'll give you clues down the road that may say, this story is going to be different. I'm going to anticipate a move higher. Of course, uh, in the process here, we moved above moving averages and trend lines right here and about the 200 bar moving average right here. And the market ended up moving, you know, moving a pretty de decent way back up to the upside and then um, uh, settling down and coming back down. But that, those are the... Those are the things, folks, that, that differentiate yourself from the rest. And I know it's, I know it's um, you know, it seems uh, hindsight is twenty twenty, but these are, uh, these are some of the tools that I use to determine are the sellers in control, are the buyers in control, who's winning this battle, and then I can compare it to the fundamental story and say, hmm, this doesn't look right. Let's watch this. Let's be cautious. Let's get out of that short position. Let's save us some bucks. Let's maybe profit from that 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 reversal back to the upside. Another uh, another thing that I I do like to use and um, and, and watch uh, folks is the thirty eight point two to fifty percent retracement. In this case case we had uh, we had the uh, seventy one and eighty four level which were key as well key, but I also like to watch the 50% retracement of a move. So here, ignore everything over here. When the market, um, if the market is able to get and stay above the 50% retracement level, you got to be really cautious about that. Okay, you have to be really cautious about that move. Now, now, um, if if uh, on the uh, Fibonacci here, it would have been a little bit higher. So these moves above the 50% really would have been up to the 50%. You can see the difference here. Um, the 50% the retracement would have been up up a little bit higher here. So in this case, the market would have been selling off there. But what? You see what happened here? We moved above the 50%, came up, and then came down to the 50% and found support against that level. That's another clue to save you some bucks, folks. It's all about saving dollars, not getting not getting caught. Not getting caught because of the the market's doing something that you didn't expect. All right? That's when the most money's lost cuz you get you get suckered into the fundamental story when the story was written here. Right there. Um, a lot of days there's news. Some days there's uh, little news. 
All right. You know, yesterday, um, yesterday was, um, you know, I don't think a necessarily a big, huge news day, was it? So, you know, to write the story becomes a little bit difficult for the um, euro versus uh, U.S. dollar. But if we look at the yesterday, um, well, this is uh, through Friday. OK, this is Friday's uh, close. And uh, you, you're familiar with some of the, the tools here that I've um, that I use, uh, including trend lines and the blue line represents the 100 hour moving average. And when I look at a chart, you know, I'll draw all my trend lines and I have my 100 bar moving average. I have my 200 bar moving average in, in there as well. Um, and I just I just look at a chart and try to draw the most obvious lines here. And when the market fell below this trend line here, because we had one, two, three, four, five different points on there, that's a significant thing. And the fact that it fell below the level at the same time as falling below the 100 hour moving average, a blue line in the chart. What does that say to you? That's telling the story, anticipate a story for a further move to the downside. So you can write the story right here, even though the market was moving to the upside, that well, maybe we're going to go lower here. Anticipate that story from what the tools tell you, what the pre market action tells you. They're simple moving averages. 100 and 200 simple moving averages. Um, and so the market moved uh, lower. And uh, this is one of those situations where we come down to the low, and what do we do? We come down to a higher low right here. So we saw a buy right here. So this is this will always be in my yellow, okay? This one will be in a yellow area right there. So uh, what did the market do on um, on uh, Friday? On Friday, or this is Thursday? We moved higher. We had the uh, sharp move to the downside on uh, th on uh, uh, last week on Friday. On Thursday, market fell below the trend line, moved sharply lower. Um, and then uh, we came up on Friday, squeezed to the upside here. This is the employment day, right? Employment day. It's employment day. Uh, what happened last Friday? Yeah, employment. Uh, employment day. So the market was uh, it was a bit confused by the employment report. In the afternoon, after London had gone home, we moved back above this 38 level, back above the uh, 57 level. And where do we close? We close right near the trend line, right near the 100 bar moving average, right? So the story... The story going into this week was about this area right here. What else can we say the story is about, um, uh, or or what the, what is the technical story going to be about this week? And I actually did a, a video. You can go you can go to our YouTube channel. The last video that I did, you can you know, just bring bring it up and listen to it. So go to forexlive.com or forex live uh, in YouTube and just um, just watch my little story there about the uh, euro versus US dollar because I had this this as a key level and although my bias is to the downside I mentioned that you know if the market moves above the trend line the broken trend line above the 100 hour moving average the bias is going to turn more the story is going to turn more bullish from a technical perspective the buyers are taking control but what's up here against this level? We have this trend line, which one, two, three, three different points on that trend line. So it's pretty well established trend line. And I can see that, and you can see that, and everyone can see that in the world who, can, who draws a who has an hourly chart and can draw a line across tops. And so this area right here is going to be a, a level as well. Now I also have this 2499 level, this 12499 level. And that uh, needs a little bit more explanation uh, why I have that line across on my hourly chart. So if I go to the daily chart and I take a look at the low from October, this was the uh, October uh, 3rd low, and the market came in at 124.99. So, and then it, quick, it quickly rebounded. We came down to that level and quickly rebounded. And we had the biggest correction of this whole move to the downside. So I always say a big correction and a bounce off of it. I have this idea that the market's going to pay attention to that level or or make sure that it, it, it watches that level. All right, I've been talking about that level for a while. So going back to our, our chart here, um, this 124.99 level, or let's call it 125 level, it's also a nice big round, big figure. Um, it's going to have my attention the moving or this trend line starting to move down toward that 124.99 level. So what happened? in yesterday's uh, trading. Well, we ended up getting above this line right here, and we moved up, and where do we find resistance? Against that trend line and near the 125 level. We moved up to it, and the next bar moved back down to it, down below it, and that was it. That was all she wrote. The market started to rotate back to the downside right there. The story was written right here. 
We rejected that trend line, and guess what? This trend line, trend line, and and also we have the 200-hour moving average coming into play here. This area right here, if the market, I don't know where it is right now, but if the market came up to this level right here, this would be a really, really, really key level for for uh, us in trading this week. Stay below it, it's bearish. Move above it, it's bullish. All right, now I'd expect the market to move away from this. Whenever you have these energy levels, these trend lines where you have one, two, three, four different points on it, you have another trend line that has one, two, underside. I consider this test the underside of the trend line, a test of the trend line. We broke through it. We tried to stay below it. We could have rotated the downside. Couldn't. We tested it again. We moved above it. Market's not sure. Doesn't know what to do. Has to go up to this line to test it. Rotates to the downside. But above this area right here, that was more bullish, and we took it up and we fell back down. Now we're back down testing our lows right here, this yellow area. Where's the market right now? Are we below the 57? Let me see here. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we went up to that uh, 38 level right here. Remember, low here, high here. This is a key level. This is a key level right here. This is what we're going to be looking at, folks. These are the levels that we have to pay attention to. Stay below, it's more bearish. Move above, it's more bullish. If we get above here, the 100 bar moving average in this low right here and get above the 57. We're going to go test this level. It's rough sledding up, up to this level right here. Lots of technical levels here. But if we're able to break above that, that level and above the, you know, we have the uh, potential to move higher. But until then, the bears are in control, right? The story is to the bearish side still. As long as the price can remain below that level, the story is to the bearish side. Where are we at? There we go. All right. That's what I try to look on. So in closing, oftentimes the news stories can be anticipated first by the price action and technical tools applied to those moves. If you can, if you as a trader can start to focus in on these key technical levels, they don't don't use a lot of tools. Just use what you can see. You know, I I love the 100 and 200 bar moving errors. I think it tells a lot of different stories. Um, you'll find that uh, you can anticipate what the story is going to be written, what the story written might be. And if you can do that, you're going to be ahead of the curve. I know it sounds crystal ballish, doesn't it? But these are the, these are the areas that you want to trade at. And again. It doesn't mean that you're going to be right. There are times when you sell against 100 bar moving average in a trend line, it goes breaking through the top side. But these energy levels, where these levels are, will often, often move the market away from it. Move the market away from it. If you can trade at those energy levels, whether you're, you're right or wrong, you should know that the price is going to move away from that level and you have the opportunity to, to almost go the other way if you're wrong on the trade and get back in. But the other important thing is that even if you're wrong, you only stand to lose a little and make more than a little. So hopefully I've been able to tell you a few little, um, you know, tricks of, you know, or, or ways that I look at the market. 38.2, 50% retracement, old lows, um, you, know, those, you know, keeping those levels in play. If you see an, a low being made and another low that's higher and we break through that level and then come back to that old low, mark that level. Mark that level as a level that's going to be important down the road. You never know when it's you know, you're going to get good trade location, and you'll be able to write the story, the story that's going to tell you um, that's going to give you the, uh, a, a winning trade that's going to make sense, uh, and it's going to make more sense to you. All right, without without re, without knowing the fundamentals, understanding what the fundamentals are. All right, so um, I'll open the um, uh, the uh, floor for questions uh, here. And that includes if you want to take a look at uh, any other uh, currency pairs, I'd be happy to, um, you know, do an analysis uh, of of it, uh, you know, here. And then, you know, like the pound sterling came up to the 100 bar, 200 bar moving average, fell off yesterday. Very similar. Well, the, the, the euro was hitting the uh, the trend line here. The pound sterling was, uh, was getting near the um, 100 hour moving average. Dollar yen. Good, good, uh, good question. Um, this is uh, this is my picture of the dollar yen, all right. And um, I was off yesterday, so I did not uh, see this action here, and then was sleeping through here, or not sleeping, but I, I was off. So, so um, but this is how I left it on Friday. 
uh, which would be right here, okay? And at this point right here, we had broken below the trend line, this nice little channel here. We had come up short here. We made new highs, and we failed, and we came back down below that level. And on Monday's trade, what did we do? We fell below this trend line right here, um, and we started to rebound, and we got above the 100-hour moving average, right? The blue line in the chart. So on yesterday's uh, trade, when the market, or today's trade, when the market opened up and the market came down to that 100-hour moving average, those traders who leaned against this level, who bought against the 100-hour moving average, um, were rewarded uh, when the, you know, the speculation came out in the uh, papers, I guess, about uh, the um, snap election and also the fact that the, um, you know, here I'm telling you the fundamental story, but um, the technical story here, even uh, uh, was it or was it a prelude, uh, prelude to the um, to the fundamental story that came out about the uh, snap election and also the um, uh, what is it the uh, the the uh, the sales tax being uh, being potentially uh, delayed. Um, or suspended. So that, um, that 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 was the fundamental story that sends it to the upside. But as you can see right here, uh, the uh, market ended up uh, holding the 100-hour moving average. And so um, you know, I, I don't. The, the fundamental story wasn't known here, but the technical story was saying we tried below the 100-hour moving average. We went below the trend line. The market should have gone lower here, much lower here. We, this is the first time below the 100-hour moving average since way over here. Or, you know, actually, you know, look at look at these moves here. Look how how long. Uh, I gotta get this off here. Focus here on our 100-hour moving average. Have we traded below the 100-hour moving average for for a, an extended period of time, going back to October 17th? Uh, one, two, three. Uh, four bars here, no closes here, and finally we get the break below the 100-hour moving average. What should the price do here? I don't have the USDs are sorry. Uh, what does uh, um, what does the price what, is, what does the price do? It should go lower here, and we should see momentum on that move to the downside. Now we're seeing the market move lower, but do we have a bar like this or this or this? No. Do we have a bar like that? No. Do we have a bar like that? No. Do we have a bar like that? Or that, or even that. No, we have these little baby bars going down. You know that that's that's all I do as I look at the momentum. You know what what does the bar say? And so when I see this happen, I'm bearish. You know, I, I, we should go lower here below the hundred hour moving average. After all, it's been all the way you know over almost a month since the last time we were below the hundred hour moving average. But as soon as the price moves back above that level. Those sellers turned into buyers here, and so we found the buyers here. And if you got, if you, if you, if you were lucky enough, or not lucky enough, but you know, if you were smart, uh, if you knew that level existed, that's 147 pips to the upside there. That's a nice trade to start off uh, Tuesday. That's a holiday in the United States. Not a bad, not a bad move to the upside here. If you're wrong, what do you risk? This amount. This is 147 pips. What's that amount? You know, not not 147 pips. So um, do the do that. So sorry, Boykey, I don't have that. Um, actually, I do. I'm sorry, but um, let me see here. Hold on. Let me let's see here. Bring up that. Okay, now let's uh, take a look at that. And we'll move that over. And we'll do that. Uh -huh. Now, uh, Boyke, I have no idea um, personally about the uh, 
the South African um, rand, rand uh, from a fund, fundamental perspective. So um, I will um, I'll look at this uh, for just from a technical perspective perspective about how you know how I look at the market market and as you can see uh, here here uh, Boyke the you know I have the same hundred and two hundred hour moving average and and in yesterday's trade what the market do it came down to the hundred hour moving average traders defined the risk against that level and they bought it up so um, you know that is another nice little uh, support here if I put a Fibonacci retracement on the move to the upside here. Uh, you can lean against the 38.2 percent retracement. Now we went below these lows right here, which is not the best thing in the world. Um, but and below the trend line here. So like the uh, like that uh, the dollar versus yen, the market should have gone lower here below the trend line, but we ran into support right here, and the market rotated to the upside. We're back down below the um, the the uh, the trend line here, which gives a little bit more bearish bias. But as long as we stay above the 100-hour moving average, you know you have to be you have to be a, a, a buyer. Um, at least you have to you have to support the buy the buying against 100-hour moving average until it moves below that level. So that's how I I would um, I would look at this um, currency pair right now. This is uh, today's the five-minute uh, chart. And uh, we'll we'll need to get above this area right here in order to push the market higher higher though. Right now, the intraday the ba the bears are in control, but you know we're coming down to a support area right here. So we're a little bit we we have a little bit uh, negative uh, bias here. Note here how the trend line here, how we fell below that trend line, then we reestablished the trend line here. So there is something to say about this being a short up here. And traders who, if if you are short against this high because it couldn't make new highs right here, if you're short in this area because we broke below the trend line, then I would stay stay with it. But uh, understand that you need we need to get below the hundred hour moving average, especially since we just tested that level. Uh, and, and let's uh, take a quick look at oil, and then I'll get to your other question. Um, you know, see how the oil oil price in uh, last week's trading we held the hundred hour moving average move lower. Nice, uh, nice, nice trade clues. Nice little trend line right here. See how yesterday the market came down to the trend line, fell below that level. These are not by accident, okay, folks. This is not an accident. 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 Okay. Markets start, you know, get used to these things. This is not an accident right here. The sellers become buyers right here when a market moves above that level. All right. I'm going to put a Fibonacci here. You see, you see uh, right here, 50% in the 200 hour moving average. Market should have gone higher here, and it did. But and if you bought above that level, you know, forget forget everything here. I'm a buyer here. We're above the 50%. We're above the 200-hour moving average. I'm really a buyer here. Okay, this is really a better buy right here. And you move above that level. We come up to the 50. We come back down. So we've got this battle going on right here, right? So the 50%. Remember, that's an important level for me. 50% of this move to the downside, that's important level to me. So this is a buy right here. This is a sell. And here we break above this level. This should be a buy. We should be breaking out to the upside, getting up above the one, the 80 level. But what does the market do? It comes right back down. And as soon as it fails up here, we start to rotate back to the downside. We break. We come down to our trend line, come down to the 100, try to hold support, and break through that level. All these levels, this is a buy, but this is a sell right here. This is a seller here. This is a buy right here. First time above that level, and now we're back uh, back down. We got to stay below the 100 bar moving average now. Um, you know we got we, you know it becomes more difficult when the market starts to come. You know we're we're, we're trying to break new lows. You know it's it's more of a balanced market down here. Sellers here, or you should see sellers here. If we move above bullish, you should be buyers here against this level. If we move below this. Move below this this floor here. I think we go and make new lows. You know, go and test that 75 level. JY, uh, I hope that helped. 
Uh, uh, hey, JY from Singapore here. been uh, reading your book, Attack Currency Trends, and it has uh, definitely reframed the way I've looked at the currencies. The webinar was definitely useful in cementing some thoughts. A few questions here. I hope you can help me out with. When trading against the trend line, is there a rough guide in which a trend line is safer to lean against, uh, need it uh, tested for at least two or three times before it becomes reliable? And that's often a question uh, <clears throat> that I that I get. Let's go back, or that uh, some people say say is that a trend line, let's ignore this third bar right here. Let's just assume this market tests once and twice, okay, right here. And people, people will say to me, well, it's not a trend line until we have three, until we have three on the trend line. And I know this is a bad example because really we do have three here. And so when we come to the fourth time right here, it becomes, becomes a thing. But you don't get to three. Um, you don't get the third point unless the market tests it or, or comes to the level and, and, and makes that point. So I don't, I don't, um, I believe that anything where you can connect two lines, this level has got to be an important. All right, this is an important level, it's a borderline where you either, you know, trade above or trade below. Now, now, so I, I, I don't, I don't want to make it that it has to be three or four before it's any good. Obviously, three, four, five makes that line even more important, but. Um, I'm not going to let this opportunity off of this correction here, uh, off of the 100 bar moving average, stop me from doing something here, or at least thinking about doing something here. For me, it's all about, I have no position, okay? Now, where do I want to trade? Well, I want to trade near a level that will provide an energy, an energy away so that I know either I'm going to be wrong or I'm going to be right. And if I'm wrong, I'm going to lose a little. If I'm right, I'm going to make more than a little. So that energy is most important to me because it, it happens quickly. It, it takes away some fear because it, you know, it should happen quickly. And I don't know about you, but I want to know, you know if I'm right or wrong fairly quickly. If I, if I put on a trade, I don't want it to, to take two days to happen. I want it to happen in this hour and to move away. And every trade for me starts with a trade. And every trade for you should start with a trade that turns into something more. Either you're going to lose a little or you're going to manage that trade to something greater. Okay? Something greater. So um, that's the first thing. Now, is there a way that your, 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 uh, your other part is, is it safer you know, can, is it safer to lean against uh, this area as opposed to another trend line? Trend line. One of the things, um, you know, th there are a lot of different nuances. Like, um, well, uh, you know, here we have four different points on on the line. So, yeah, for, by all by all means, lean against the trend line here, especially through here. Okay, but what I will. Um, what I'll also pay attention to, this is a secondary trading tool, okay? A secondary trading tool to me is um, if if the range for the day, uh, if we're coming up to a key trend line or a key moving average line, it doesn't, you know, it could be a trend line, a moving average, or a Fibonacci retracement. If the range is already pretty big, all right, it becomes a... Um, worth a shot to buy to to buy against that that, uh, that level now i know you know if 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 the range is pretty big we're in a, in the middle of a trend type of day um but uh <clears throat> it might allow you the opportunity to um to risk a little you know again like in, in this day right here pretty big range to the downside coming down to a nice little trend line here we made a low here. We had a low here. I'm not surprised that we had sellers here against the hundred. I'm not surprised we moved sharply lower here against that hundred. But you know, the battle that there's a there's there's more of a battle here between here and here, here. And so this is worth taking a shot because in addition to being the trend line, it also is a um is a pretty big move already. 
So markets can't go forever and ever and ever to the downside. It, it, it can, but that's why we lean against this level because we can put our stop below that level. Does that make sense to you? I hope it does. So sometimes I'll take a look at the range, you know, a good indication or secondary tool might be just looking at the range for the day and comparing it to uh, what is normal, okay? And oftentimes at Forex Live, I'll, I'll, I'll put what is normal um, for a uh, trading range um, and, um, and use, use that. Now, conversely, if the range isn't large and we're coming to a... Um, a trend line, then like this range might be not might not be that large, and so uh, you know you can look for look for a break. And plus, you know you, you know there's other things that go in. Like we we like for instance, you know so it's really hard to dictate dictate all the rules. You just have to use your common sense, uh, uh, JY. So for instance, here we have a high, and we took out the high by how many pips? Just a few pips here, right? And then we start to come down. We come down to this bottom side trend line. And we start to hold some support against that trend line. I'm not all that bullish here. Okay. I'm not all that bullish here. We took out the, we had the opportunity to take out the high and head up to this level. We couldn't. We took out the high by a few pips and we come down to the trend line. I'm not, I'm not all that convinced that we're not going to go lower here. All right. So sometimes that's just common, you know, common sense like, well, what did we do? Well, we went above and we took out the highs by a few pips. We came back down to the line. I'm not going to be a big, huge buyer here, even though it worked here a little bit, but we ended up running into resistance right here. That's why I have a line here. See this high right here, this low right here. This line came in right against that level. And what we did, we broke above that level and moved higher. So maybe that helped you. I hope it, hope it did. It's hard to write all those things in, in a book, you know, without it just being like in this case, in that case, or whatever. But you know, just use your common sense. Just think, and, and and you'll you'll find that you know, oftentimes you're right. Okay, what is the market telling me? It's telling me it couldn't go higher. I can't go higher. So what are you going to do? Go lower. I've been following your examples in the book and in the videos on FX Live. How do you determine a top for Fibonacci retracements? Um, yeah, uh, you know that that I can t I spend a whole day on here as well. I don't know if they're throwing me off here. Um, they aren't. So as long as I'm okay with the uh, people at FX Street, I'll go on. But um, <clears throat> I can spend a lot of time on the, on the Fibonacci um, uh, re retracements. Here, here, just just divorce yourself from all things that you know about Fibonacci retracements and clear your mind and just say, <clears throat> for me. A Fibonacci retracement is a corrective tool, is a corrective tool. So the market um, moves in a trend-like way from a high to a low, from a low to a high. And we know that those, those moves tend to have corrections. And... And so what I a lot of times use the Fibonacci retracements as is to measure the trend-like moves. Take that out. So right now, I would put my, this is a trend-like move, a move to the upside, a, a very small correction, a move to the upside. So this is a trend-like move. And I and, and what determines a trend like move? Buyers overwhelming sellers. Buyers overwhelming sellers. Overwhelming sellers or sellers overwhelming buyers. And little little you know you know a, a pretty one one directional type of move. You can see it here. Go from left to right. We start at a low. We move higher. We go higher. A little in the way. So I am going to put my Fibonacci retrace from there. I'm going to measure the 38.2 to 50 percent. And this becomes a, a area where we should stay above because if buyers are in control here they should want to be in control there's this like internal clock within us that says at 38.2 to 50 percent off we will continue to buy something that we like we will continue to buy something that we like you go shopping and you see something that you like and it's 40 percent off what do you do as a shopper 
you buy. I buy. It's forty percent off, honey. I'm like, well, it's still it's still spending money, honey. I mean, it's you know, I still have to spend sixty percent of something that you already have. Again, no offense to my wife, um, but uh, so that that is a that is a clue to me that buyers are in control, that they buyers want to stay in control. Because I don't know if buyers want to stay. You know, if the market came down as 38.2 and it went below the 50% retracement level, this area right here, what I call a correction zone, then the buyers aren't remaining in control. The sellers are starting to take control, aren't they? And so that's what I try to try to do. So, um, you know, so just, again, I can spend a lot of time on Fibonacci retracements. But what I like to look at in my charts is trend type moves, fast and you know, well, fast directional tend to go larger than than normal. So this isn't this isn't like this. I mean, this is extraordinary fast, and there's no corrections here. But um, you know, in fact, I would I would you know do something like like this of this move right here, or you know maybe. From this low right here, this is the biggest correction there, and we stay at about the fifty percent. So anyway, so um, so it's just a it's it's a measure of corrections. Markets trend and they correct, or they tend to trend, trend and they correct. And I need to know if the buyers are still in control, and that's what I try to look for. Okay, I gotta finish up. Uh, yeah, we have the, the uh, Reserve Bank of uh, New Zealand uh, later on today. We had our monthly longer webinar on two parts. And, uh, uh, yeah, uh, just, in, just in closing, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand uh, today, uh, this afternoon, is going to be key. Key uh, yesterday, or that's a daily. Let's go to the hourly. Um, <coughs> um, watch this area right here. We, if we, you know, if he talks about the currency and we move below this area, look for further selling. Okay, this is just you know position squaring we're bullish right now okay i would not have a position going into that that uh, financial stability report i would try to use this area as uh, either a level to lean against for an upside or a level to sell against on a break to the downside and then watch the 50 percent retracement of 78.18 if we go and stay above that level we went above it yesterday but couldn't stay above it came down to the 200 100 you know trade in between here move below and then moved higher okay I want to uh, thank you all for uh, coming in here. Thanks again for the FX Street for allowing me the opportunity to take all your time and keep everyone here. But I appreciate that. And uh, uh, wishing you all good fortune in your trading. My name is Greg Michalowski from Forex Live. Visit me daily and uh, the rest of the guys here at, there at Forex Live. We'll help you along. Take care. Bye-bye.